Hello there and welcome to the series of videos going through the content of A-level maths. Here we're looking at the normal distribution where we're finding mu and finding uh, sigma so we can answer questions from exercise 3e. Now, if you haven't seen exercise 3d, I suggest you go back and watch it. It's where we introduce the idea of the standard normal distribution, which is going to be really important for this video. And it's where we see this formula of x equals x minus mu divided by sigma. That's the coding process from any normal distribution to the standard normal distribution, because we're going to really heavily involve the standard normal distribution in this video. Probably if you're thinking, why do we need to use it in 3D, this is why we need to use it. OK, so we have a question where the random variable x is normally distributed with a mean of 3, sorry, a mean of mu and a standard deviation of 3. Given that the probability x is greater than 20 equals 0.2, find the probability of mu. So as in the previous section, start by drawing two sketches, one of your distribution x and the other of the standard normal distribution. OK, so let's get that sketch started. We have, first of all, on the top, we have our distribution x, where the probability of 20 or more is an area of 0 0.2. Um, we don't know what the mean is, though. And in this case here, we have a mean of 0, standard deviation of 1, where we don't know where this point is, but we know that the area above it is 0 0.2. And the link between these two equations, this is our x distribution, this is our z distribution, the link is x, so z equals x minus mu divided by sigma. So what we can do first is find this value here, this question mark down the bottom here that we don't know. We know that the area above that mark on the standard normal distribution is 0 0.2. So we can use our formula booklet results to know that that area or that value on this uh, question mark here is going to be 0 0.8416. So that value there is 0 0.8416. Now what we can do next is we can link 0.8416 to 20 using this coding process here. And the z value is going to be 0.8416, the x value is going to be 20. We don't know what the mean is, but we know what the standard deviation is. So that will create us a formula where we have one missing unknown. So there we are, that's how we're going to solve this question then. So z equals x minus mu divided by sigma. We know the z value is 0.8416. We know that the x value is 20, and then it's going to be minus the mean that we don't know divided by 3. So rearrange this, and we get 17.5 as our value for the mean. So there we are. We're using the percentage points table and the uh, transformation from our normal distribution to the standard normal distribution z equals x minus mu over sigma to work out a missing mean value. It doesn't have to be a missing mean value though, it could be a missing standard deviation value as well, just like in this question here. In this case we have a machine that makes metal sheets with a width x, modelled as a normal distribution such that x is uh, normally distributed with a mean of 50 and a standard deviation that we don't know. Part A is given that uh, the probability of x being less than 46 is 0 0.2119, finds the value of the standard deviation. Once again, draw your sketches of your two distributions to help you out with this question. You know that 46 or below has an area of 0 0.2119, and on the standard normal distribution, you know that there is going to be some marker at which the area below that marker is equal to 0.2119. Now in this case here, it doesn't ring a bell to me that I could use my percentage points table. In this case, I'm going to have to use the mode on the calculator, the inverse normal mode. I know that the area to the left of a certain marker is going to be 0.2119, where the standard deviation is 1 and the mean is 0. And I get my answer here of minus 0 0.7998, and that's what I've got as my marker now here. 
So now that I've got two markers at the same place on each of the distributions, I can now link the two of these together using z equals x minus mu over sigma. So in this case, z equals x minus mu over sigma. Substitute the values in. Remember, this is your z distribution. This is your x distribution. z is always the normal one. And we're going to have minus 0 0.7998 equals 46 minus 50 over sigma. You can see here we're going to have a negative on the right and negative on the left. So the standard deviation will always come out to be positive. So the standard deviation here is 5.00 to three significant figures. Lovely. So we've seen one question where we're working out the mean, one question where we're working out the standard deviation. Now let's have a look at a question where we uh, we'll, we'll do a part B first. We'll, eventually, what we're going to do is work out mu and sigma. So in this part B here, finds the 90th percentile of the widths. <coughs> so the 90th point, so the 90th percentile is with 90% of the data below it. So just use your calculator. 0 0.9 is the area below that certain point. 5 is the standard deviation we've just worked out. Uh, the mean is 50. And the answer there is 56.4. <clears throat> okay, moving on to that question I was just talking about. So the random variable x is a normal distribution where the mean is just mean, the mean, uh, mu, and the standard deviation is represented with sigma, so we don't know either of them. But we are given two pieces of information now. We're given that the probability of x being greater than 35 is 0 0.025, and the probability of x being less than 0 0.1469 is given, so it's given by 0 0.1469. And we've got to find the values of mu and sigma. Now what I'm thinking here is two variables we need to work out. We've got two bits of information, simultaneous equations. So, in this question here, drawing out two sketches, first one of your x distribution, one of your z distribution. We know that the probability of more than 35 is 0 0.025. We know the probability less than 15 is 0 0.1469. Now, immediately, I know that my mean is going to be in between 15 and 35. And then I've got to move on to drawing the standard normal distribution. So I don't know where these markers are down below, though. I might be able to use my calculator or the percentage points table to work these out. Uh, so what I know is that from some point on the, stand, on the standard normal, the area above it is going to be 0 0.025, and the area below this marker here is going to be 0 0.1469. So for the first one, I'm going to use the, um, the formula booklet, so that's 1.96. And for the second one here, I'm going to use my calculator uh, as minus 1.05. So assuming that you know how to do that, that's okay. So this one here is formula booklets. This one here is calculator inverse normal mode. We're now going to um, create our simultaneous equations. One on the lower tail, one on the upper tail. So the probability of um, x being less than 15 is equal to 0 0.1469, and the probability that z is less than minus 1.05 is 0 0.1469. So this 15 here and this minus 1.05 here are corresponding x, z values. So now we can plug them into this formula here. So minus 1.05 on the left equals 15 minus mu over sigma, on the right hand side. Uh, what I would suggest you do is multiply up by sigma first and mark this as simultaneous equation number one. Simultaneous equation number two comes from the upper tail. We know that 35 as the x value and 1.69 are corresponding x z values for this formula here. z equals x minus mu over sigma. So typing both of those into the formula and timesing up by sigma we get our second simultaneous equation. And now we've just got to solve both of those simultaneous equations, call them equation one and equation two. Uh, maybe you might want to do equation two, take away equation one. You might want to solve them a different way, but this is one way of doing it. You might want to make the mu's um, equivalent um, and then set the uh, results equal to each other. However you want to do it, you're gonna get the same answer where the standard deviation is 6.64 and the mean is going to be 22.0. So 
So there we are, that's how we answer questions where we don't know the mean and we don't know the standard deviation. Bam, your turn to have a go at this question here then, it comes from exercise 3e. Pause the video and try this question out. Right then, let's get stuck into the question then. So an automated pottery wheel is used uh, to make bowls. Uh, the diameter of the bowls d in millimetres is normally distributed with a mean of mu that we don't know and a standard deviation of 5. Given that 75% of the bowls are greater than 200 millimetres, find a uh, the value of mu. So let's get started on the value of mu then. So in this case here, it's a good idea to draw out two sketches one of the normal distribution that you're working with, and then another one of the standard normal distribution uh, where we can work out the z value. So this is the x distribution, this is the z distribution. In the x distribution, we don't know what the mean is, but we know that 200, a diameter of 200 or more has a probability of 0 0.75. So what we'll do is we'll draw that same area for the standard normal distribution where we know that the mean is 0 and the uh, standard deviation is 1. In this case, the standard deviation was 5, uh, where we know this probability is 0 0.75. Now, what we ideally want is to use x, so z equals x minus mu over sigma. But what we need to know before we use this, we need to, we, we're need going to use this to work out mu, but we, so therefore we need to know all three of the other letters. We know the standard deviation is 5, we know the mean, sorry, we know the x value is going to be 200, but we don't know the corresponding x value for 200 on the standard normal distribution. But on the standard normal distribution, we do know the mean and we do know the standard deviation, so we should be able to use the inverse normal mode on our calculator to work this z value out. Now remember the inverse normal mode works out an area to the left of a certain point and it works out that point for you. The area we'll need to type in is 0 0.25. So in this case here standard deviation of 1, uh, mean of 0 and the marker that we're going to get for this point here is minus 0 0.6745. <coughs> okay. So, what we're now going to do is we're now going to use this formula with a x value of 200, a z value of minus 0 0.6745, and a standard deviation of 5. So let's go ahead and start plugging those in. It's going to be, um, whoops, minus 0 0.6745 equals 200 minus the mean divided by 5. <clears throat> and then rearranging this is going to be minus 0 0.6744895.79. I'll use as much detail as I've got in my calculator uh, up here. Then I'll be timesing that by 5. And then I'm going to be doing 200 minus answer because it's a negative. And I'm expecting a value to be bigger than 200. And I get here 203.4. Lovely. There we are. So that's the answer to part A. The answer to part B is find the probability that the diameter um, of a randomly chosen bowl is in between 204 and 206 millimetres. So in this case here, just grab your calculator and type in a lower bound of 204 and upper bound of 206. Standard deviation of 5 mean that you've just worked out and you get an answer here of 0 0.15044553311 uh, we'll round this off to three significant figures, 0 0.150. Lovely, and the last question, part C, three bowls are chosen at random. Find the probability that all of the bowls are greater than 205 in diameter. So what we're going to do there is work out the probability that one bowl is greater than 205. So the probability that x is greater than 205 is going to be equal to, well, let's use the normal CD mode on the calculator. We therefore want the lower bound to be 205, upper bound to be something massive. Uh, type that into your calculator and you get 0 0.372. Uh, 
And then what you can do on your calculator is to go back into the main calculator mode, option number one on the menu, and click answer to the power of three. Now why are we doing it to the power of three? Because we want three bowls to be chosen at random, so therefore we need to do the probability of x is bigger than 205 times the probability where x is bigger than 205 times the probability where x is greater than 205. Think of it as a tree diagram, you're going along three branches where the probability is going to be greater than 205 millimeters. In this case, you're going to multiply your answer by itself three times. And in this case here, you get a final answer to three significant figures of 0.516. Great, that's a one there. Okay, so there we are. That's how we answer questions from this uh, section here. Then have a go at plenty of the questions from exercise 3e. Remember, you're using the coding formula of z equals x minus mu over sigma to link corresponding values of x and uh, z using this formula. Lovely. Thanks very much for watching.